It was four o'clock in the morning and I was excited. Why? Because I jumped out of bed to do my morning jog. You see, what I had done is I had agreed to a challenge. And the challenge was to go to China to learn Kung Fu with Shaolin monks. And I was dreading it. But I was excited because you know what? As part of the training, I had to do half a marathon. And to do half a marathon, I had to train. And that particular morning, I jumped out of bed, I put my shorts on, I put my t-shirt on, I put my, my whole jacket on, and I was ready to go. Put my music on, and I started my run. Whew. I live in Woolwich Arsenal, uh, which is southeast London, for those who don't know. And I was running down, I was running down the hill, and it's a beautiful thing, four o'clock in the morning. It's like the whole world is asleep, and you're awake. Beautiful colors. It's not quite dark, but it's not quite light. And I was running down, I was running down the hill, and I turned right, which is what you're seeing in the back there, beautiful river, except this morning, things weren't quite right. My hair was really dripping wet, it was soaking. I had more hair back then. And I was just so hot, I had to stop, unzip my windbreaker, tied it around my waist, got some fresh air and carried on running. <sighs> except, as I carried on running, something wasn't quite... <laughs> I kept running because I could push through this. And there's a path in Woolwich that literally where the concrete ends, the dirt begins. And literally as I stepped off to the dirt, I... <laughs> and I threw up from the bottom of my soul. Now, I don't know if I'm the only one that has this, but in my head, I had one voice going, calm down, go home, sleep it off, it'll be okay. And then the other voice going, push through, push through, push through, push through. The other voice going, calm down. Like, like the, uh, the genie from Aladdin. Calm down. It's going to be OK. Just go home, sleep it off. Will anyone mind if you don't actually do it? Push through, push through, push through. Is that just me? Am I the only one that's insane? Or do other people have those voices? <laughs> OK, clearly it's only me. So with those voices going on in my head, I had a decision to make. But as I was standing there, hunched over, beautiful morning, feeling really sick, I remembered the way of the Chan. And the way of the Chan is what the Shaolin principle is based on. It's all about basically me becoming a better person, therefore being better at everything I do. And I thought, if I carry on running, I'm going to become better. I'm going to be a better person. I'm going to be better at everything I do. And when I go to Shaolin to do Kung Fu, I'm going to be completely prepared. So what did I do? I carried on running. But not before I realized that the Chan was a very real thing. But also I had to embrace four major things. I had to move them from being intellectual concept to being a real concept. And that's what happened when I was hunched over. And that's the Four Noble Truths, which is, based on, which is the basis of Buddhism. Now, I'm not a Buddhist, I'm not an endurance runner, and I'd never done Kung Fu. But what was true was, Noble Truth number one, was I'm going to have to truly embrace suffering on my journey to China. The second one was, I really had to let go of the desire to achieve. I really had to let go of having to do a certain mileage. I had to let go of really having to achieve it. And I was just like, ah. But when I managed to do that, it created space for me to enjoy the journey. The third one was, I had to get to the root of what, were my, what was my desire to achieve. And the root of my desire to achieve was mastery. This concept of mastery, which we're sold to in the West, which I'm going to go back into in a minute. And the fourth one is I had to understand that the path to happiness lies in detachment. I had to let go of the whole process and allow it to happen very naturally. So I don't know about your understanding of mastery, but in the industry I'm in, and many industries, it's sold as a singular achievement. As you do certain things, you achieve mastery. A master chef, a master trainer, a master coach, master practitioner, and it's flung around very cheaply. But I bought into that. So my whole drive towards mastery was to achieve mastery because I want to be a better person and I want to live the way of the Chan and I want to achieve massive things in my life and I want to impact the world so there's no conflict. I am heading to mastery. And when I actually started to get closer and closer to going to China, it actually put me into a real state of fear and anxiety because this whole pressure of needing to be masterful, this whole way that the Western way, or especially in the UK, sells it as it's an achievable thing, of course it is, but it's an achievement which you enroll into and you become a master. Become a master in business. And I was just like, okay, that's what I want. That's what I want. I want to be a better person. I want to be a master. So I made it to China. I qualified. It was great. And we started the training. 
So that's us learning the iron hand. If anyone done Kung Fu, it's when you slap your hand on a sack many times, and it hurts. So suffering was very real. I did the other side, and you do it for ages. And day after day, we put our bodies through grueling physical, mental activities. It's true, I was definitely on the path to suffer. This is a picture of doing hard qigong, and we are kicking our shins against each other a hundred times, all in the name of Kung Fu. But that's part of the process. I was embracing, I was kicking, kicking, and that's a very beautiful picture of me in pain. Clearly, crying by the end of it. And the woman taking the picture, loved it, smiling. Ha ha ha, do it again, do it again. No, thank you. So we left that all bruised every single day, pushing our bodies. And in my mind, this was the way to mastery. This is the way for me to achieve greatness. Except, I met a real master. I, read, I met this Shifu. Shifu means master. And when I came into his presence and he started training us, I learned that mastery is much greater than the concept that I was sold to. Here's a guy who was so peaceful, yet in a second he was this force. He was the guy that was being mastery. He wasn't declaring it. He wasn't saying, do my Kung Fu, you will be a master. He was simply being masterful. He was leading by his actions. He was creating impact on all of us by simply doing and being true and authentic to his beliefs and who he was. Don't be mistaken, this guy is a walking weapon. He's a master in seven different martial arts, in meditation, in nutrition, in your internal organs, in so many different things, yet he never declared it. It wasn't for sale. It wasn't about, hey, do my course, I will make you master. He wasn't like Mr. Miyagi from Karate Kid. It's true essence of mastery. And it really played in my mind. Because I wanted this push, this drive, that push through, push through, push through. That voice kept coming, push through, push through, push through. And every time, every time we sat down and the shifu was like, what do you want to do? And some would say, rest. I'd be like, no, we can't rest. I didn't come to China to rest. I didn't train for a year to come to Shaolin to, train, uh, to rest. No resting. Let's push through, push through. That voice, push through, push through, push through. Because here's what I'd bought into, a singular directional understanding of mastery. Yet he was someone that was showing me a completely different side to mastery. Also, he was showing us that happiness can lie within this journey, that while you're suffering, you can be happy, that it's not a destination that you strive to, that it's something you input into the journey. And I was completely blown away by him. I'd never met someone like our Shifu. He simply was and lived mastery. And after a particular session, he sat us all down and he said to me, or to us, what do you guys want to do? What is it you want to do? Everybody went quiet and gradually the voices came forwards. Oh, we'd really like to rest. We'd love to rest. My head went off. Rest? I didn't come to China to rest. I'm not here to rest. Push through, push through, push through. So I put my hand up and I asked the Shifu because it was bugging me because I had this continuous conflict going on my head. That same argument, no mastery, push through, no, calm down, rest, boom, boom, boom. So I asked the Shifu this question. Wouldn't we be shortchanging ourselves if we didn't push through? And he sat back in his little stool, he went quiet. And then he said to me, he said, Elliot, the whole 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, push, 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 push. That's movies. That's not real. You see, mastery. Mastery is about understanding when you're at your strongest, you're at, you're at your weakest. It's understanding that your weaknesses can support your strengths. Mastery is understanding your limits, but yet pushing through them 
but doing it within balance. Understanding your limitation, honoring them, and then allowing yourself the knowledge to push through. Mastery is knowing when to pull back and when to push forwards. And then he asked me, at what price will you push through, Elliot? At the price of your body? At the price of your health? At the price of your mind? At what price would you push through? He said, in the West, there's the go, 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 ta, 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 it's all fast, 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 fast. Get, 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 achieve, 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 achieve. And at what price do people achieve? At the price of their relationships? At the price of money, time, health, stress? That's not the journey. That's not mastery. That's one directional. That's not a way of life. And that's when it shifted in my head. That's when it shifted in my being, my essence, in who I am, in who I'm choosing to be, in who I'm choosing to show up. And then he said this to us. He said, in order to slow down, one must understand, and the key word is understand. If one must, um, in order to have speed, one must understand how to slow down. And the key was understand. He says, many people say slow down, but knowing how to slow down. That's the path to mastery and balance. So I've been back a few months now in the UK, and I wear this outfit, not because I'm a master in Kung Fu, far from it, but because of what it represents to me. And now, when I'm in the UK, and someone offers me to attend a course in mastery, to do something that will make me a master, my response is, You can sell mastery, but I choose to be mastery. Thank you. <laughs>